All right, guys, so before this video gets started, I just wanted to throw a huge shout out to Super Clean. So I got a very nice email from a very nice woman over at Super Clean, and they asked me if I would test out their products, and I said gladly, because we are constantly using cleaning products here. So they went ahead and sent us their full line of products, which I've used, and they're incredible. So you're going to see us using it throughout this video, and I just wanted to let you guys know that this is available pretty much everywhere. O'Reilly's, AutoZone, it's available in certain local stores. You can order it online directly from Super Clean. But what they went ahead and sent us out was their floor absorbent, which, guys, this stuff is incredible. It's so nice to have it in a jug like that to where you can just shake it out on the floor and walk away from it. The new aerosol can of Super Clean is great, too, for cleaning things quickly like glass or whatever else it may be. Um, but you do want to test that stuff on any kind of glass or painted surface before you use it because this stuff is super, super strong. We got our original formula super clean. We have foaming super clean and we have the new super clean all wheel cleaner, which also works incredibly well. So big shout out to super clean. Go check out their website, superclean.com and make sure that you pick up some of these products. They also sent us a nice little hat and a beautiful shirt. And uh, super thankful to those guys over there for, uh, for helping us out with this stuff. And we're going to try to help them out as much as we can. And yeah, so let's, uh, let's get on to the video and start using some of the super clean stuff. <laughs> What's going on guys? So, question, are you sick of Jeep videos yet? Probably not. You guys never get sick of these things and I don't know why. But hey, the more I can do, the more you guys can learn, the better off we're all going to be. But today we're going to be doing a front brake job on a Jeep Wrangler. Now these are probably the easiest brakes you will ever, ever do. Guaranteed. We're doing pads and rotors, and literally you need two tools. You need, in most cases, a 13 millimeter wrench, and you need something to push your calipers back in with. That's literally it. This job is not very difficult. There's two bolts on the caliper, which you'll see us pulling off in a second, and then caliper comes off, you pull the pads out, you push the piston back, pull the rotor off, put the rotor back on, do everything in reverse and you're good. So I'm gonna flip you guys around. We'll get right into this because it's gonna be quick. I'll show you both sides because it's gonna be quick. And uh, hopefully you learn something. You can knock out your brakes on your own, not have to take it to a mechanic or you know a shop and pay three, four, five hundred dollars to do this job. The parts for this job cost about a hundred bucks, um, 120 bucks, maybe a little bit less if you go through Rock Auto or something like that. But very easy job. You guys could do this at home, no problem whatsoever. So let's get started. Obviously, the first thing is to pull the wheel and tire off. We already did that. So I'm gonna flip you around, show you how to remove these calipers, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I've been trying a little bit better with shot framing and everything. Derek's got something on the dyno again. But literally, all you need to do to get these calipers off of here is there is a bolt here and a bolt up here. So we'll go ahead and take these out. And just be kind of careful because a lot of times these will get rusted in place and you do have an opportunity to break them. Just like every other rusty vehicle that we work on up in the Northeast here. But you're just gonna take these out and you'll be able to pop your caliper off of there. And we're going to get detailed on this one too, guys, because there's a couple little oddities. Like, for instance, the way the brake pads are set up. So we'll see if we can get you in here to show you. So down here on the bottom of the brake pad is like a horseshoe shape that actually saddles the caliper bracket. Up on the top, 
there is just a, a notch. There is no horseshoe saddle. And this whole thing can move. So when you take this caliper off, it does have to come off this way. You do have to rotate it off and then lift it up a little bit to get it off of this saddle. And then the whole thing will come off. So if we're lucky, all we gotta do is twist it a little bit and then pick up on it, it comes right off. Then we'll stick that up there. And then to get the rotor off, all you have to do is just pull it off. And now what's nice about these Wranglers and several others, the Grand Cherokees, the Cherokees and whatever else, the caliper bracket that retains the caliper is actually part of the knuckle itself. Now, whereas most vehicles, you have the caliper mounted on a caliper bracket, the caliper bracket is then mounted to the knuckle. Jeep went ahead and integrated all that directly into the knuckle, so it makes doing brake jobs on these things super easy. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull the pads out of the caliper. And that's super easy too, because all you have to do is just push. Push out and up, out and up, and then that pad will slide out. And then usually what I like to do is if it'll fit in there, is that's when you can use your C-clamp or whatever you have to pull this back, and you leave the pad in there so you don't damage this piston. Because a lot of times these pistons are plastic now. They're, well, a phenolic plastic, and you can damage them pretty easy. But the tool that I have, and I'll link that in the description, actually does that for you. So pop the inner pad out. Take your caliper tool. Put it into the caliper. And then as we ratchet this, it spreads and it'll push our caliper back. And you can go nice and slow. Until the caliper bottoms out, which is right there. All right, so now we got that push back. We got that good. Now the next step in doing a brake job on these, the next thing you want to check is that these caliper sliding pins move freely. This is what the caliper slides on as your brake pads start to wear. Now this one was a little stiff and the other one was perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pop these out. Make sure that that pin looks good. There's no rust on it, but you can see it's very dry. So what we have here is a little bit of silicone ceramic extreme brake pad lubricant. We're just gonna take a little bit of that and brush it on. It looks like I need some more of this because I'm almost out. But we got that one lubricated. So pop that back in there. And the, it's super important that these things move freely because if they don't, you'll end up with hung calipers, stuck calipers. Um, you can end up with poor brake pad wear. All kinds of goofy crap can happen. So I like to make sure that even if they feel good, I pull them out. See, even this one looks pretty good, but again, it's pretty dry. I pull them out and I put a little bit of grease on them just to make sure that they don't stick. Because I've run into many issues where people have come in and they've got a stuck caliper. And not only did it ruin the brake pads, but it ruined the caliper too. It got so hot it broke the piston, it can boil these lines, you can have all sorts of issues with it. So now that we got that stuff lubricated, I like to take and go ahead and put a little bit of grease on the piston where the pad contacts it. And then a little bit of grease where the outer pad contacts the caliper. And this just helps with squeaking and squealing and also helps with any rust buildup because another thing that can happen with these, especially again, here we are in the Northeast, the rust belt 
if rust builds up on this part of the caliper here, it can offset the pads and make them wear funny. It can, you know, degrade braking performance and all kinds of stuff. So it can get pretty nasty pretty quick. But so now that we have everything is lubricated, our caliper is good, it pushed back just fine. We're good there. We're gonna go ahead and clean up this knuckle a little bit to get some of the surface scaly rust off of it. Then we're gonna clean the face of the hub so that our new rotor sits on there perfectly. And there's actually a special tool for doing this. I don't have it, but it's a, it's a neat little tool. I just use a wire brush to clean all this stuff up, but we're gonna go ahead and clean all this up and then I'll bring it back as we're putting it back together. All right, guys, so something I wanna mention quick has to do with brand new rotors. Now, brand new rotors, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but whatever, it's covered. You can probably see it there covered in oil and the reason they do that is so that they don't rust during shipping but you need to be super super sure that you clean that off before you install these rotors all right so another trick you can use is when installing your rotors and your calipers back on and everything else your rotor is going to want to move all around so what i like to do is i take one lug nut right at the bottom and I don't know that these are gonna seat all the way down. They might not. And if they don't, we could always do something else. And yeah, they do. So you put one lug nut on there just to kind of hold things in place so that you're not struggling with it. And that helps significantly. So now that we got that done, the next step is to reload our caliper. Now, these are pretty easy, but again, another tip is that you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put the inner pad in first. And the reason for that is simply because there's not enough room to do it the other way. As goofy as that sounds, it's the truth with these Jeeps. And I'll show you why in a second, as soon as I get the stupid plastic off of these things. Everything these days is wrapped in this crazy plastic. You always hurt yourself unwrapping stuff. All right, so this is the inboard pad, and you can see it's got this, this little guy right here. That little guy actually fits inside of the caliper piston. And if you do not install it first, when you have the other pad here, there's not enough room to actually slide it down in there and get it slid into the caliper. So now we got that one done. We're going to use a knife to open the other ones. And the outer pad just drops right in. And there's two holes in the caliper, one here and one here. And on the pad, right here and right here, those are the alignment pins. Those pins help align this thing in here. So you start them down and you might have to pull out on those tabs just a little bit. And you can maneuver this pad around until you get it to seat in the alignment holes. There we go, popped right in. So now we're good, we're seated. The pad is all the way up against the caliper on both sides. Now we can rotate the caliper down, slide it over the rotor, and just how we lift it up and off, we now are going to slide this down so that our pads ride on the saddle down here. And then we can make sure that our caliper pins are pushed back enough. And then we literally just pop it on there. Take your two caliper bolts, slide those back in, line them up and screw them in. All this stuff should go in by hand. If it doesn't, you either need to lubricate some stuff or you need to check that your caliper is straight, that your rotor's straight, 
and that everything is uh, where it's supposed to be, including the wrench you used to take these things apart. There we go. So now we'll just tighten them up like we did when we loosened them. And you don't have to go ham on these things. I mean, they do need to be tight, but not, you know, it's just an eight millimeter bolt. So it's not gonna take a lot of force to break it. So just be careful. There we go. And that folks is literally the entire brake job on the front end. So we're gonna move over to the other side do the exact same thing. guys so this is what i was talking about these two caliper slider pins are like stuck stuck i can't move them by hand and they're very difficult to move even tapping them so we're gonna pray that we can get these out of here there we go so we're gonna get those out of there and we're gonna re-lubricate them because that little bit of a sticky situation can cause big problems. Just like that, your brake job is done. That's both sides, and we did it in about 20 minutes. Even filming it, it only took about 20 minutes. Um, you may run into some minor issues, like with these bolts being seized or breaking, that can get ugly. Um, the calipers sometimes can be a little bit difficult to get off of the rotor, so you might need to use a little bit of a pry bar, a little screwdriver or something, just to kind of push them off. Um, the rotors will tend to get stuck to the hubs, and when the rotors get stuck to the hubs, you literally just have to keep tapping them with a hammer until they come off. You know, tap here, tap here, tap down here, tap down here, and eventually it'll break loose and come off. But other than that, if you, everything goes well and you don't live in the rust belt like I do, this brake job should take you on the ground a maximum of an hour. And you can get it done, knock it out, save yourself a bunch of money, and you'll be good to go. So now that that's done, I think we're gonna go outside and play with a little bit of that super clean because I got the wheels and tires for this Jeep look horrendous and I wanna see if the super clean is gonna clean them up. So we'll take those out, see what happens. All right guys, so let's try out some of the super clean. This is just the regular OG formula super clean. We got a wheel and tire and a train. We got a wheel and tire from the Jeep that we're working on. You can see that it's pretty well dusted. The rim is kind of dirty, so we're not gonna use the wheel cleaner, but we are gonna use this stuff. A little word of advice. If you're unsure about the surface that you're cleaning, dilute the crap out of this and then test a very small area because this stuff is super strong 
and in full strength can actually do some damage to paints and untreated glass and a whole bunch of other stuff. So make sure that you follow the dilution instructions for the material that you're cleaning and also test a small area before you start using the stuff all over the place or if you're cleaning a large area, make sure that you start and do it in little sections just to make sure that you're not damaging anything with this. The last important thing before I spray this is never allow this stuff to dry on anything. If you let it dry, it will start etching, it'll do all kinds of stuff, it'll stain. You literally need to just wash this stuff off as soon as you can. Let it soak for a couple minutes, wash it off. Do it in a cool area outside the sun so that it doesn't dry. So let's get to squirting. All right, let's rinse this off and see how it looks. All right guys, so there's your before and after. Before, after. And that was with zero scrubbing. I did not scrub that wheel at all. That's just spraying the stuff on, letting it soak for a couple minutes and then rinsing it off. So huge difference, awesome product. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because we only used the OG. We didn't use the foaming. We didn't use any of that stuff yet. So we may give that a try. All right, let's give the foaming cleaner a shot. See how that does. All right, now you guys can see how amazing that works. You can see the immediate road grime and tar and oils and everything else that comes out of these tires. They just look disgusting. And I love to use a heavy degreaser on my tires before I put any kind of dressing on them so that I'm not locking in all of the trash that ends up on these tires throughout the road use. So every time I wash my vehicles, I hit the tires with a good degreaser. You can see how nasty brown all that is. All that stuff comes right out of the tire. Then you put your tire dressing on it and they look amazing. So we'll hit this just a little bit more. And again, no scrubbing. We'll let it soak for 30 seconds or so and we'll rinse it off again. See how it looks. All right, it's been soaking for about 30 seconds or so and remember, don't let it dry. You see all the nastiness that comes off of these things? Just clean my door while I'm at it. Rinse this stuff really thoroughly too. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to get it off of there, especially once it binds with all the oils and the grease and all the other crap. All right, there we go, guys. Super clean. <laughs> Stuff's actually amazing. Works really, really well. Can't wait to try it on some like grease and oil stains and stuff like that on the floor. Probably gonna try to clean this hat up a little bit with it, see what happens. Um, but yeah, go check them out. You can get this stuff at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, I believe even Advanced Auto Parts carries it. There's a ton of different stores. I think Walmart's carrying it now. And you can always go to superclean.com and pick it up right from them so go check it out it's worth every penny big thanks again to super clean for sending this out to us to try out we love you guys and we love your product so see you guys all in the next one have a great night